Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will talk about discrete or linear convolution. So basically, the definition of discrete or linear convolution of two discrete time sequences x1 of n and x2 of n can be expressed as x3 of n is equal to summation of x1 of m into x2 of n minus m over the limit m ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity right or it can be expressed as x3 of n is equal to summation of x2 of m into x1 of n minus m over the limit m ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. So in this two ways we can represent the convolution or the linear convolution of two discrete time sequences x1 of n and x2 of n. Fine. Now you might be thinking what is this x3 of n? So basically this x3 of n is nothing but it is a sequence derived from convolution derived from convolution of x1 of n and x2 of n. Clear? Fine. And what is this M? So M serves as a placeholder. M serves as a placeholder or better to say it is what a dummy variable. Clear? Dummy variable. Fine. Now let's talk about the sim symbolic representation of the convolution relation. Right. So on top you have seen two expression, right? One is this, another one is this, right? How to represent this symbolically? Okay. So here if you see x3 of n is equal to summation of x1 of m into x2 of n minus m over the limit m ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. So you can write this as symbolic representation x1 of n means convolution of x1 of n and x2 of n right where this is what indicates this indicates convolution operation what this indicates convolution operation clear now let's see the symbolic representation for the second expression. So here x3 of n is equal to summation of x2 of m into x1 of n minus n where m ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. So here this is what the symbolic representation for this is convolution of x2 of n and x1 of n. Clear? Hope these two symbolic representations are clear to you. Fine. Now let's move further and check some more things. So basically the linear convolution process involves the manipulation of two sequences say x1 of n and x2 of n which are what non-periodic in nature. Right. So through convolution a new sequence x3 of n is derived which also exhibits non-periodic characteristic. So basically x3 of n is also non-periodic. So consequently this particular convolution is commonly referred to as a periodic convolution because of these two reasons. Okay. It is referred to as a periodic convolution. Hope it is clear to you. Fine. Now let's move further and see some properties of linear convolution. Right. So basically we will discuss three properties 
first one is what commutative property second one is associative property third one is what distributive property right and we are going to prove these properties also don't worry about that so let's see what the property of commutative says so if you talk about commutative property it says that convolution of x1 of n and x2 of n is basically equal to convolution of x2 of n and x1 of n clear this is what commutative property now let's talk about associative property so associative property so result of convolution of x1 of n and x2 of n okay if the result of this is convolved with what x3 of n so this will be equal to what convolution of x1 of n and result of convolution of x2 of n and x3 of n this is what associative property hope it is clear to you fine now let's talk about distributive property so distributive property says that convolution of x1 of n with x2 of n plus x3 of n is basically equal to convolution of x1 of n and x2 of n okay plus convolution of x1 of n and x3 of n clear so this is what the distributive property says so don't worry about that we are going to prove each and every property for the linear convolution in our next lectures so as of now just remember these properties okay fine so if you have any doubt in basics of linear convolution or discrete convolution you can ask in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel thanks for watching